Today we're going to show you how to use various tools to diagnose a similar misfire. If you check the comments under this video, you will see links to all the tools we're going to discuss today. Before we get started, we need to verify which sellers are not firing. There are two tools which will help you figure out which seller or sellers are misfiring. In our experience, 75% of seller misfires can be identified using our seal spark gap tester. We use this tool at cranking speed only. The other 25% of the time, you may get misfires anywhere in the RPM range, and they may be steady or intermittent. This is where we'd use a neon spark gap tester like our 511-9764. Once you determine which cylinder isn't firing correctly, you'll need to determine what is causing the misfire. You'll need two tools to perform this test, a multimeter and a DVA adapter. There are two different schools of thought. One is you start at the spark plug and work backwards, and the other is you start at the stator and work forward. I like starting from the spark plug, so that's what I'm going to show you today. To eliminate a problem in the boat side harness itself, causing the engine to misfire or not even to fire at all, we have to disconnect it and use a remote starter that enables us to control the engine back here. Now, this one's made with two different op uh, options. This older connector connects to the old red harnesses on the engine. This one is 1996 to 2017 Deutsch connectors on the Johnson & Rude motors. And of course it would get tangled up. Now, you see here, these connectors right here, this is the one you want to go, to go to. It's got the various different colored wires. And if you notice, the wires match going through the connector. Now we also plug up the other side going up to the engine, I mean to the console, because that allows us to put power to the warning system. So when we turn it on, we got our beat, we got our uh, warning system back up. Okay, we're going to show you how to use our 511-9766 spark tester. As you can see, I've got all six cylinders on this motor connected up, and they're in sequence, top to bottom, on both sides. Now, in addition, your ground wire, the clip here, that's your primary, but as a safety secondary, this other wire, I also hooked to a ground in contact right here. That prevents any accidental shocks if this one right here comes loose when the motor's trying to turn over and pop loose. What we'll do, take our spark tester, hooked up, we've got it set on an air gap, and what we'll do is we will take and spin the motor over and verify that we have spark. Okay, we're going to test out that misfire using our 511-60 meter with the uh, DVA adapter. We start out by unplugging the leads, plugging the adapter in, and notice the red goes to the side that says uh, volts and hertz. Plug the leads in, like so, and then we have to turn the meter to DC volts. Now, pay attention that it has the word auto in there. You don't want to be on the wrong range. And what we would do would be to take and hook the, oops, set the meter up there and go between inch and ground and the uh, input. Now what I'm doing here is sliding a probe up underneath the boot so I don't have to pierce any wires. I put a ground up and put it up on the ground and I drop my remote starter and spin it over and see what kind of voltage I've got. I have 200 millivolts, which means I have no voltage going to that uh, coil. Next up, I'll have to go back further and see where the problem may be. All right, this is our 511-9764 spark tester. It can be used one of two ways, either as a standalone spark tester 
where you connect it to ground, rock like that, and watch for your spark here, or you remove the clip and connect it directly to the spark plug and then to the spark plug wire, like so. Now, as you can see, we have a spark plug tester on each one of the cylinders. That will help us identify a miss at a, up to a fairly high RPM. And what you can do is you just watch the neon lights and see which cylinder drops out. Now, it actually works a lot better at night. You can see everything running, but it work, does work in, in the daytime, but you need to have it in shade where you can see it good. As you can see, we had a problem with misfire on multiple cylinders, but also, if you noticed on this cylinder, it picked up fire when we started the motor. Now, that uh, means that we're going to have to investigate uh, further on the ign ignition system because it's not just one cylinder misfiring, it's all cylinders. So in review, we identified a problem at cranking speed where we had no fire on one cylinder. Now, once we fired the engine up, we identified that cylinder as picking up fire, but it was intermittent. All the other spark plugs are also intermittent, which means there's a problem in the ignition system beyond the cranking speed or idle speed. Now, if you had one that was running smooth at idle speed, if you take and put, a, as long as you keep a load on that engine, you can rev it up to higher RPMs but do not exceed 2,500 RPMs on a hose as the engine could run away and you'll be able to, unable to shut it down. From a safety standpoint, please do not do that. But you can back it down in the water until the cavitation plate hits the water and fire the motor up and you can bring the RPM up safely because the engine at that time would have a load on it with a propeller. Otherwise, it needs to be on a dyno. Thank you for watching.